This is Smiles TV. Welcome to Smile Television Talk Show. I'm your host, Stephanie Anthony Moss, and thank you for tuning in to another broadcast. We have a delightful show for you today. I'm sitting with two icons from the radio industry. You don't want to miss this broadcast. I'll be talking with Mr. Bernie Hayes and Miss Denise Williams. Remember, Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. He was crucified and buried, and he rose on the third day. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God has raised them from the dead, and thou shalt be saved. Stay tuned for more smiles. Are you looking for an insured and bonded residential or commercial contractor? On Time Contracting, owned by Ali McDowell, is just a phone call away. On Time Contracting operates with the utmost integrity and quantities to complete your project right on time. Residential or commercial, exterior or interior, roofing, siding, flooring, you name it. If you want your project completed for the price quoted and at the time quoted, contact On Time Contracting. Good, quality, professional work guaranteed to be completed on time. Call 618-567-3591. No project is too large or too small. On Time Contracting. Call On Time Contracting today. Hi, I'm your lady, Edie B, and I want to congratulate my sister, Denise Williams, on her induction into the National Black Radio Hall of Fame. You know, her category, the Talented Sisters of Radio, fits her just perfectly. She juggled two different categories in radio back in the day. She was news director and an on-air personality. And her show, The Ballad and the Beat of Love, was a late-night ballad-driven kind of show, the likes of which later became known as The Quiet storm so she definitely had it going on yeah <laughs> just realizing that all these esteemed honors and awards are given by the National Black Radio Hall of Fame a dream that was created right here in st. Louis Missouri by a man and his wife whom I have the utmost profound respect for Bernie Hayes and his wife UV Hayes that makes me feel a wonderful kind of way you know and I'm so proud to be able to reach back and say to these wonderful radio personalities and those who worked in the industry that we remember what you did for black radio we remember Bernie Hayes did that St. Louis congratulations Nisi Williams and congratulations to all of the inductees into the National Black Radio Hall of Fame welcome back to smile television talk show I have the honor and privilege of talking with two radio icons and not just radio icons for example mr. Bernie Hayes has been a disc jockey, a performer, a journalist, radio television announcer, columnist, recording artist, and producer, and much more. Denise Williams, a news anchor, traffic reporter from the helicopter, a writer, producer, and school teacher, and much more. Thank you both for coming to Smile Television Talk Show. It is an honor to sit here with you. Thank you for the invitation. Yes. Thanks for having me. Oh, yes, ma'am. And, and I have to tell the audience a, a quick story. I have a cousin named William Chandler who does collages from East St. Louis, Illinois. He currently lives in Atlanta, beautiful collages. He and Denise Williams went to school together. And he said, Stephanie, why aren't you covering the National Black Radio Hall of Fame at the event that's coming up? And I said, well, I'm not familiar with it. He said, you must interview Denise Williams because she's being honored. And Mr. Hayes is actually the one who started the whole business. So we're going to start with you, Mr. Hayes. Yes, thank you. Tell me, first of all, how's your family? Family, um, excellent. Thank you for asking. And tell us a little bit about um, your wife, because I don't know if everybody knows how popular she is and what she does for her. Her name is Uv Hayes, and she's a singer. She's been singing for a long time now, over 40 years. Over and 40 years. She has a total of about 22 CDs out and albums and uh, over 300 single records. And she's much better known 
overseas than she is here in the States. But uh, she's very popular here. She's not only a recording artist, but she's also a psychologist. Wow. Same as public schools. And she retired. My goodness, how excellent. And Miss Denise, how are you? I'm great. Okay, and how's your family? My family is fine. They're all going to the activities in uh, Atlanta on October 7th. Okay, and thank you for getting that date out early. You just heard her. October 7th is the date that there is going to be the National Black Hall Radio of Fame Award inductees ceremony. Okay, well, uh, we're going to get to that. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So, Mr. Hayes, you have been in the um, industry for how long now? 67 years. 67 years. Yes. Wow. So, when you started, I know, I know you've seen some changes. So, yes. And, uh, <laughs> some people say, would you change anything again? I change a lot of things. Certainly, I've seen many, many changes, but not as many changes as I would like to have seen. Really? Yeah, I think things are parody for black people, for us, African American announcers, radio and television should be better. You know, some of the obstacles will be still based challenges. Uh, it should be repealed. And we should have a, a nicer way in the world, not only broadcasted, but in the world itself. Okay, okay. And, and, and Ms. Denise, so right now, um, we were talking prior to um, the cameras coming on, and you said that when you first got the letter that you were being inducted into the National Hall, Radio Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. that you were very excited. Tell us about that. Uh, I was very excited. <laughs> I go, me? And you have to be nominated. So I'm like, how did they get me? Now, last year I went to the induction, which was held here in St. Louis mm -hmm. under uh, Bernie. And EDB got inducted, uh, Scotty Lawrence, Jim Gates, and some others. But... I went to support them, and that's when I, I got all excited about this. You see, all excited. This is a, just a national induction ceremony. But Denise has been in the St. Louis Black Radio Hall of Fame since 2009. What? <laughs> you see, so this is just a more uh, a, a formal induction. I see. But, uh, all, everybody that's being formally inducted are already in the Hall of Fame. So this see. is a national induction ceremony. I see. We call we recognize everybody in Denise. You see, Denise is not only being inducted to her radio work, but she's also a public servant. And uh, she has more experience than most people realize. Okay. And she's a better announcer than most people realize. And uh, she, this honor is well overdue nationally. Mm. And actually, it's international, actually. But, uh, but uh, she's been in the Hall of Fame, and she's always been a Hall of Fame. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, let me ask you, uh, the inception of this whole um, business here, the National Radio Hall of Fame. How did that come to be? Well, Stephanie, um, Black Radio has never got its due. You know, Jack L. Cooper in 1929 began Black Radio, more or less. He was the first announcer. But uh, we've always been treated like a step shot. Mm -hmm. All the wonderful things, all the wonderful contributions we've done to the industry are not recognized. So I'm not saying they took us out of the book. They never put us in the book. Mm -hmm. You see, so we had to say what we've done, speak for ourselves, and write our own book, and write our own story. And this is the premise of mm -hmm. National Black Radio Hall of Fame. Let people know what we did, and we're very proud of what we did, and it's what it is. Okay, okay. Denise, how did you get into the radio industry? Um, well, I went to school at SIU Carbondale, and I was always wanted to be a teacher from the time I was a little kid. And when I got to high school, and I started listening to this, radio stuff on KATZ, mm -hmm. and I heard Bernie and Jim Gates and Doug Eason and all these guys, Al Waples. I just I fell in love with it, mm -hmm. and I'd have my little transistor radio <laughs> going down the hallways of Lincoln High School just listening to the music 24, <laughs> all day long. <laughs> I loved it. I just fell in love with it, and then I, I decided, you know, watching the news with everything that was going on back in the 60s with our race. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a news announcer. So that was my dream. Wow, and you told me that Mr. Hayes was one of the ones who gave you your first opportunities. He gave me my very mm -hmm. first job mm -hmm. at a radio station here in St. Louis, KKSS. Mm -hmm. I was a weekend news anchor. And a friend, I should say my brother-in-law, mm -hmm. called Bernie. <laughs> and Bernie pulled me in. And I thank him to the day. I wouldn't wouldn't be in this business had it not been for him giving me my start. Wow. You see, Stephanie, Denise 
who was a natural talent. She didn't have need any training. She was better than some of the people on the air already. Mm -hmm. You know, and when I heard her and I found out who she was, it was automatic. Mm -hmm. And that's why she's being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Wow. The National Hall of Fame. She's always been in the St. Louis Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Miss Denise, what's next for you? What's next is uh, the Black Radio, National Black Radio Hall mm -hmm. of Fame has a uh, internet radio station that anybody can listen to and give, give, give us the BRHF. BRHF Internet Radio. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 365 Live. That's mm -hmm. the one that you click on. Right. 365 Live and go to BRHF Radio. Okay. Radio. Okay. So I'm looking forward to getting my show on the air there. Okay. It's long overdue. Long overdue. It's, it's just a matter of technical. <laughs> so that's my next move. Problems. Um, because she's also be invited to do a podcast from here, Harris so State University podcast. Oh, excellent. Yeah, she'll be doing a podcast along with the internet radio show. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's news to me. Thank you. <laughs> Well, let me ask both of you. So when we um, go to Atlanta for the activities that are scheduled, um, what are we to expect? Oh, you're, you're going to expect the cream of the crop from the radio industry. And also not only the radio industry, but the, so the music industry so, at, at large. Uh, you hear record promoters. You'll hear uh, disc jockeys. You hear programmers. Mm -hmm. And you hear some lot of posthumous Mm -hmm. Induction also. Okay. Yeah, you know, I, you know, he's actually a cousin of mine. Yes. He was a cousin we of have mine. So yeah. much history here. Tell us about this institute. Well, this is uh, Don Wolf was a announcer, also an attorney. Uh, he was an announcer on uh, KMX Radio. He did a jazz show, and uh, he donated his collection to here us here at Harris Stowe State University. For the name of Jazz Institute after Don and Heidi Wolf, his wife, Jazz Institute here. And we've combined that also with the National Black Radio Hall of Fame here at Harris State University. You know, the area is only HBCU. Mm -hmm. So we thought that'd be appropriate to honor Don at the name of the Institute and with all the recordings that he had. Uh, we have more than 78,000 recordings here at the Jazz Institute. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I had we're, we're, we're comparable to the Smithsonian. <laughs> yes, sir. I had the privilege of meeting um, Mr. Um, Attorney Wolf. Mm -hmm. I used to be um, public relations director for Harris Stowe State College yeah. at the time when Dr. Gibbons was the president, right. and he had a vision of expanding. And um, because I love radio production or television production so much, we had a television show called Realizing the Vision because he had a vision of expanding, and we would... Um, highlight the different things that were currently going on at the college and it definitely has expanded and yeah. yes and speaking of education um you have a wealthy education background yeah uh i ended up i strayed away from the the uh education part and did my radio tv degree mm -hmm. at siu carbondale mm -hmm. that became what i really wanted to do so my aunt who was a school teacher who myself and my two sisters followed getting into that field, I uh, said, you know, that's a hard field to break into. You mm -hmm. might want to do something else. God stepped in. That year, SIU Carbondale put forth a one-year program in elementary education. Mm -hmm. And I had to get special permission to take all the courses that I needed. I was taking up to 21 hours per quarter. It was quarters back then. And I had to go to the president to get that permission. They gave me the permission. Great A's all the way through. Really? Yes. Wow. And I got my degree in elementary education mm -hmm. and in radio television at the same time in 1974. Mm. So it was an honor. Mm -hmm. And so I went on to, like I said, get my first job from Bernie and also to start teaching school. And I ended up when I was with East St. Louis School District 189, along with my brother-in-law, we wrote the radio TV program for School District 189. We talked about that. Didn't get credit for it, but that's okay. <laughs> we know we did. You did. And it's still we going. We know you did. It's still it's going. Still, we all know you did. Okay. We was... One thing I'd like to introduce uh, also, the uh, picture, uh, I guess, that comes to mind when you hear about a disc jockey. 
we figured out somebody just went to to a radio school or something and mm -hmm. you know, just wanted to spin records and that's all they do. But most of the disc jockeys in the industry, so-called disc jockeys or announcers, are college educated. Mm -hmm. You know, they may not have a degree, but most of them went to some university. So I understand. Of higher learning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So th that's another myth we want to dispose. That's you know, they, they think that you're just a disc jockey, you ain't nothing. Right. You know, but most of these people are college degrees and they're at least college students. Right, and a lot of a lot of people don't realize the expertise that has to, that goes into that. I actually have a degree in radio television production, so I understand. And I remember when we first started, we were actually slicing tape with a razor blade, and so things are different today. So um, technology, technology is, is is moving on. Mm -hmm. So I'm um, looking at the past. And we kind of briefly talked about this a little bit, but looking at radio, the radio industry or the media from the past and we see where we are today. What are your thoughts about that and where do you think we're headed in terms of the whole communications medium? I want Bernie to go first on that because okay. Bernie did an article that I loved in the St. Louis American, mm -hmm. in his weekly column, about the death of black radio. Okay. So. I also wrote a book called The Death of Black Radio. The Death of Black Radio. Of black okay, radio. you guys heard that. He has a book called The Death of Black Radio. Yes. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> And uh, but in 1982, when Ronald Reagan became president, and uh, he was president, and he deregulated mm -hmm. the radio industry, and those uh, allowed the conglomerates to come in by all of the frequencies, and also to allow not only a person to have one or two radio stations in the same city, they can also buy other media. They can buy the newspapers. Mm -hmm. They can control everything that you listen to. So anything that you hear was something that someone allowed you to hear or see mm -hmm. on TV. Mm -hmm. That was terrible, and uh, it just ruined the black radio industry because we had no money to buy these wonderful stations. Mm -hmm. See, we, we they they just locked us out. They had a thing called Nesbit that at one time they wanted to fund African Americans to buy stations, but they we were bought out. No way, so we could compete with millions and billions of dollars for corporations. I understand. Yeah. go ahead, Denise. Um, as far as black radio today. I think we're not getting, our voices aren't being heard, basically. Um, I can remember mm -hmm. there were some afternoon talk shows, Mike Carr, I think it was, and some Tom Joyner and some others. Yeah, sure. uh, we got Ricky Smiley still, but our voices are not out there. Our voices are not being heard. Our news is not being heard. No information. Mm -hmm. hmm. And that's terrible. Okay. And so... We have the podcast situation. I understand that you may be doing something with podcasts coming up very soon. So, and we can control the narrative with what we do have. Um, how, not how important, because we know how important it is to control the narrative, but realizing that our voices are not really being heard, what can we do to increase that um, ability to get our voices out there? Well, I'm going to defer to Bernie again. Okay. Because Bernie has started something right here mm -hmm. that is helping in that process. Okay. Yeah. I, I was first taught Black Radio. Post. I started Black Radio here in 1979. Wow. But what to do if the people who do, what the old black people who do on radio stations should concentrate on information, mm -hmm. informing the public what they need to know and what they need to do. Okay. You know, we had a Black Radio on, I still have, and instead of coming in with information, they built their own reputation on. They came in and decided to do hip hop. You know, but, but and, uh, they just want to keep us boogieing, dancing, but nothing, no knowledge. Nothing of substance. Right. Right. And, uh, and I think that's the entirely. Uh, I, I think it's criminal. Mm. In many anyway, but I, I do think that the, the future, in my opinion, of black radio, is none until we be able to purchase all the stations. And, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, um, and I believe that's one of the reasons God gave me the mind to do Smiles television talk show is to be able to get information out mm -hmm. that we may not hear in the uh, regular media. So I do appreciate those responses. So is there anything um, that you can tell the youth or what words of wisdom would you guys give them in terms of trying to enter the business? Once they get there, we know we need, they need to get the information out and, and be pointed and, and control our narrative. But what about entering into an, the industry? 
what advice would you give them? Well, I'm going to say this. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I wanted to start teaching um, journalism, radio, TV in the high schools because when I got to college, the kids that were around me had already had classes and done programs. And I knew nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we wrote that radio, TV program, and, which is still being taught. And uh, so now the kids at least have their foot in the door when they go to college. And from there, if they stick with it, the sky's the limit. Actually, Dr. Jockenstein's daughter, DJ Lady Jock, was mm -hmm. one of my students at Lincoln Senior High School okay. back in the day. Mm -hmm. And look at what she's doing now. Yes. I'm so proud of her. Yes, yes. Most, I would say, the most important thing for our youth today is to stay alive. Mm -hmm. Wow. Lifestyle that's going to keep them alive. Mm -hmm. You know, they must realize that they're an individual. And no one on this earth or planet like them before. Mm -hmm. There's no one on this planet like them now. And there'll never be another of them in the future. They should certainly take that into consideration because they're divine. Mm -hmm. I think they should learn as much as they can about their history. Mm -hmm. Because they right part. Certainly, they should certainly find out what they've done and who they are. Wow. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm just really eating all of this up. This is just such great wisdom from both of you. Um, any lasting words? Because we're going to have to wrap up pretty quickly. And anything that we did not talk about that you believe is important to share, go ahead and do that now, please. Well, I think doing what you're doing is just marvelous. And I sincerely, sincerely hope that the people or could continue to support you because what you're doing is so informative and it's so necessary. And I just wish you all the luck in the world. I know God has you in his hands. No, oh, glory to God. Thank you for that. I think we've got to not only start trying to put money together so we can get our voices out there, but we've also got to lobby some of our... I mean, we elect people to office. Mm -hmm. We deserve a piece of the pie. We need grant money. We need all kinds of money to help us in our pursuit of having our voices, our news, our black history heard. And I don't care who tries to shut that down. It's on nonprofits. It's on schools to teach what has happened to us through the years mm -hmm. and how to move forward. We've got to instill that in our youth. We've got to. Well, can we do this? Please give our listening audience, our viewers, um, information on how they can make contact with you, just in case people might be interested in donating or supporting in any way. How can people do that? Well, they can reach me at Harris Coast State University. I'm the curator here at the Wolf Jazz Institute, and also the CEO and president of the National Black Radio Hall of Fame at Harris Coast State University. And they can call Harris Coast State University and ask for any aid that you'd be connected to me. Very good. Okay, and I have a nonprofit mm -hmm. which, because of COVID, has not been operating, but it's called the Broadcast Center, not for profit. We did a concert back in 2016 in Derby Heights at the park, and Bernie was one of the announcers, he and Sheila Reed. Right. And uh, we haven't done anything. We're planning on trying to revive that next year because currently I'm an alderman in, well, for 12 years now. Wow. No. Ten long years. Time. Ten years. <laughs> ten years. Long time. Long, you're right. Just a long well, time. <laughs> yeah. And if I don't do it while I'm in all, I don't think it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But I've got to get my nonprofit back up and running because I want to work with kids from small kids all the way up. That would be excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Got to use a bully pulpit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. It's important. We got, we, got, we got to keep our youth going. I will never give up on young people. Okay, okay. One more thing I do want to say. So, can you give us the names of the others who may also be um, inducted into the Hall of Fame? Well, uh, I mean, uh, other than Denise uh, from St. Louis, Missouri, here, there's, I'll assume it's the real name, Jockenstein, you know, Rod King. Mm -hmm. uh, UV Hayes will be also inducted. And there'll be several others here. I just can't think of any okay. right now. Okay, okay. I do have a list. Okay. And, and, but 58 cities are being. Uh, well, I guess you don't know all of those off the top. This, yes, sir. Fifty-eight cities are involved. Exactly. But the Excellent. national artists. 
that yeah. are going to be there. Oh yeah, yeah. Ludacris and yeah, he mentioned though he mentioned that with yeah. Ludacris and um. Hopefully Tom Joyner. Mm, Tom Joyner, right? Okay, well I want to thank both of you for taking time to talk with Smiles Television Talk Show, and I want to thank you for tuning in to another broadcast. Don't forget support the National Black Hall Radio Hall of Fame. It's right here in the St. Louis, Missouri area, but we know this broadcast is going worldwide. Support the National Black Radio Hall of Fame. Thank you again. Thank you again for being with us. Thank you for being here. Remember, only what you do for Christ will last. And Jesus is the Lord. The Lord be magnified. Keep smiling. You look better when you smile. This is a History of Black Radio is called the Untold Story of Black Radio. We're now in the National Black Radio Hall of Fame, which is also located here on the campus of Harris Stowe State University. But this tells the story of blacks or African Americans or Negroes or colors in the radio industry. There's so much we've, we've contributed to, and it's time that that story be told. That's why there's a National Black Radio Hall of Fame. We have 38 cities now uh, from California all the way to New York, from Florida up into Washington State. And uh, so we're covering the, the nation with the uh, information and the knowledge of what's happening in black radio. But uh, as we go around here, see some of the exhibits that will be displayed. And Denise Williams is also in the Black Radio Hall of Fame, and, and she knows a lot of these folks. This is KATZ from 1965. Robert B. Q., Doug Eason, Jerome Dixon, Buster Jones. That's Bernie Hayes next to James Brown and Chuck Cunningham. Also, a very interesting station that everyone knows about is right here, WESL, where the Smiles show takes place. This is a picture of Michael Jackson. Michael's about nine years old here. This is in 1972. But I first brought him here in when he was six years old, when we had him at London House East in East St. Louis, Illinois. They actually ran out of gas. And Scoop Sanders and I from KXLW, we had to go and uh, pick up Michael and the Jackson Five, buy them gas so they could make it to the gig. But uh, as you can see, time has passed and things have changed. And you know, Bernie, somebody told me that they appeared on Broadway at one of the clubs, and all you had to pay was 50 cents to get in the scene. It, 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 they, <laughs> they raised it to a dollar at one time. Okay. <laughs> and here's a, another picture of KTZ with the, another boy from East St. Louis, Donnie Brooks. And there's Jim Gates, who Father Times, Doug Eason, Gene Norman, and Robert BQ. It's KTZ Radio. And here's the person whose father is a photographer, photojournalist at the St. Louis American newspaper. Oh, wow. Wiley Price, the very first black disc jockey in the St. Louis area. Wiley Price. And here's another person that you should be familiar with. He's from East St. Louis. His name was Leo, Leo Cheers. Cheers. Leo was good friend of yours, was he not, Denise? The man in the red vest. That's right, that's who he was. So these are just some of the memorabilia that uh, you'll see of the National Black Radio Hall of Fame. Here's Jesse Spider Burks. He's known for jazz all over the world. And he used to put on a great show. Yes. And he was a KTZ and KXLW and KSTL. Yeah. We have much more, many, many more. Uh, artifacts and you know, displays and exhibits. Bernie, you didn't mention when we were doing the interview about you uh, having done a TV show, you and Jim Gates. Oh, yes, you did we, two shows, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, we did the Black Circle Hour, and we also did the Soul Brotherhood, Jim Gates and Jim and Bernie's Soul Brotherhood, which uh, incidentally we'll be reviving uh, this coming year, probably in October, November. We're going to do the Black Circle Hour and Soul Brotherhood combined again and have some of the same people who we had on that original show like in 1970, 71, 72, come back and do his dance, even if they're on crutches. <laughs> Pre-soul train days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don Cornelius was a good friend, and he took our concept and did it in Chicago. I was actually a, an artist on Soul Train at one time. 
Okay. Yep, on the cool strut and another couple of records on the Soul Train at one time. And didn't you do a song that was a tribute to the black woman? Tribute to the black woman, yes. So that was the stacks. And uh, it, it hit number one in Kansas City, mm -hmm. but it was popular all over the country. It's some of this. And the Cool Strut, they did a commercial on that uh, uh, last year, a national commercial. Uh, I think it was Heineken's did a commercial on the Cool Strut. Did you get residual? I did. <gasps> yeah. That's what I'm talking about. And it's important <laughs> that, uh, that the people who are into the building business now know about the publishing company and the business end of the company. Uh, just can't uh, be a recording artist and, and not get some payment and know how the business works. That's what it's called, music business. Right. And uh, that's what they're going to do. And I thank Stephanie for allowing me to do this for her today. And, and thank you, Denise, for accompanying me. And congratulations again on your induction. Thank you. National Black Radio Hall of Fame. And Bernie, thank you for all that you do for as long as you have done it and are continuing to do. It's the kind. You're awesome. Thank you so much, Denise. Thank you. Thank you. It's a wonder to be real with you. Thank you. When you visit Big Mama's in East St. Louis, Illinois, located at 5900 St. Clair Avenue, you will need a fork and a bib. Big Mama's is known for their barbecue, cakes, excellent service, and giving back to the community. Call in, eat in, drive through, carry out, order for your office. You can call Big Mama's at 618-398-8950 or visit 5900 St. Clair Avenue in East St. Louis, Illinois. The Smiles Television Talk Show wants to showcase your business, organization, church, and activities. If you have an interest in being a guest on Smiles Television Talk Show, or if you have any show ideas, contact Stephanie Anthony Miles at smilestv777 at gmail.com. You may also call 618 741 3770. Tell your friends to subscribe to the Smiles YouTube channel. Let Smiles TV increase your reach. Remember, you look better with Smiles.